Good afternoon and welcome to the 2020 Pink and White Lady Classic. We are in the production facilities of Central High School in the CHS Media Department. Let me hear from my fellow Central Bulldogs here today. Yeah. Hey, all right. I'm Don West along with Corey Riggs and we are ready to bring you the 2020 Pink and White Lady Classic Bracket. And uh, Corey, due to the fact that it's 2020, uh, we are doing things a little bit differently this year. Well, that would be a mild understatement. Uh, I believe my favorite phrase right now is, and now for something completely different, and that's what we have. We've got a Zoom bracket unveil and interviews for you this afternoon, as well as the fact that we have got a new look tournament field and locations. And we'll dive into all of those specifics a little bit later. So how did we get here? Well, the pink and white tournament was formed in 1973 by Dr. Jim Jester, who was the director of Greenwood Lab School at the time. And right at the time that Title IX passed and the Missouri State High School Activities Association began sanctioning girls high school basketball, Dr. Jester wanted to have a tournament that mirrored the boys blue and gold. And then 20 years later in 1993, Dr. Edsel Matthews, who was director of athletics of Springfield Public Schools at the time, wanted to have a tournament that was a lot like the boys tournament of champions, which was wildly popular. And as you know, still is today. So that happened then. And by the time 2012 rolled around, the two forces got together, Springfield Public Schools and Greenwood to form a tournament that had characteristics of both the pink and white and the lady classic. It had a big field of 32 teams with two 16 team brackets and also brought in out of area powers to play the local teams in Southwest Missouri. So Corey, again, since it's 2020, some changes had to be made and the, the tournament staff has done a great job with them. Yeah, your tournament directors and coordinators have been working countless hours trying to get an event that could be put on with all of the precautions and problems that 2020 has presented us with in the middle of a pandemic was a lot of peas. I'm surprised mm. I made it through that. Uh, but we want to take a moment now and recognize those folks, beginning with Darren Taylor over at Greenwood Laboratory School. Of course, Josh Scott and Marty Marsh, they have just worked so hard to try and make sure that this event, while being slightly different this year, is still the event that you and basketball fans in Southwest Missouri have grown to love and appreciate around the holiday season year after year. So a huge thank you to Josh and to Marty and to Mike Percival at Greenwood Laboratory School as well, as Mike and his team will join the field of the tournament this year for the first time. So we're looking forward to where they will slide into the bracket which we'll cover here in a little bit. But first, we want to say thank you to many tournament sponsors who have helped make this all possible. It starts with HK&W Supply, Forrest and David Hutton are the partners there, and Highland Dairy, and Greg Stevenson is our liaison for Highland. He is a former uh, pink and white official for a long time and has been uh, the front man there heading up Highland Dairy and their uh, public relations for a long time. And Corey, there are others too. I, I just want to say, Greg, just one of the generously nicest guys. There's not a sporting event in Southwest Missouri that Highland Dairy doesn't support. I know a large part of that goes to Greg. He's just one of my favorites. Our presenting partners for this event this year include Mediacom, which Don and I represent. And of course, being a part of high school sports in Southwest Missouri has been one of our passions ever since the cable company opened so many years ago. We're celebrating our 40th season of covering high school sports in Southwest Missouri, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. The other presenting partner played again sports at Adidas. Jeff Sawyer's in the crew. Obviously, tournaments like this need a ton of help and great community partners. Played again sports is another one of those community partners that helps this event move along. Also, coaches, you can pre-order your pink and white tournament apparel, the t-shirts, if you want them. You can go to playitagainsportspringfield.com or you can call 883-7444, ask for Brock, and you can get some of those t-shirt orders in in advance. There are also nightly partners involved with the tournament, the La Quinta Inn Airport, the La Quinta Inn South, and Great Southern Bank. The tournament will be held December 28th through 31st at five different Springfield Public School sites with the finals on actually early in the day on New Year's Eve at 10 a.m. and noon with the championship games at Parkview High School. 
So let's get into some of the changes of the tournament this year. And again, Corey, we start with uh, different locations for the Pink and White Lady Classic. Well, you've got a couple of different reasons why all of that's necessary. Obviously, this event has called the Drury University campus home for years. The Great Lakes Valley Conference in a coordinated effort to protect their student athletes, their coaches, uh, you know, and their fans decided to go without fans this year. So that would make having a girls high school basketball tournament of this scope and size on that campus very difficult. I told you we had plenty of reasons to thank Josh and Marty for the work that they do, and this is one of them. So instead of being at Wiser Gymnasium or at the O'Reilly Family Event Center, we now move and will utilize all five Springfield Public Schools gymnasiums. Um, there will be a difference in the bracket when you take a look at it this year. Normally, we have the pink bracket and the white bracket. We seed one through eight. This year, with the different locations, we'll split up into regions or regionals, if you will. So the top half of the bracket is seeded for the top four teams, one, two, three, four. The bottom half of the bracket it is, is then seeded teams one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth on the pink side and the white side. So a different look to the bracket, a different location, and a different field of teams. Still 32 teams, but no out of area teams for this year's event. Blue Springs was supposed to come down from the Kansas City area. Melbourne was make, supposed to make the road trip north from the state of Arkansas. But of course, with COVID protocols in place, a ton of travel restrictions on schools that reach far outside of Southwest Missouri meant those two teams could not join the field this year. So instead, a couple more local teams added to the field, an all sort of Southwest Missouri feel now to the 32 team field. And those are the bulk of the changes uh, on top of, you know, needing to buy tons of hand sanitizer and masks. <laughs> Ava and El Dorado Springs stepped up to become the final two teams in the field due to those cancellations. Well, we want to give you kind of an NCAA tournament selection Sunday feel for this. And so with all the teams online and watching us via Zoom, it is time to unveil the bracket for the 2020 Pink and White Lady Classic. And we're going to start with the number one seeds. Starting with the pink division top half of the bracket, the number one seed is Kickapoo. The Lady Chiefs own wins over Thayer and then Carthage, Webb City, and Miller at the Carthage Tournament. The pink division bottom half number one seed is Willard. Winners of the Willard Classic, which is in a new format this year with eight boys teams and eight girls teams. Willard beat Camdenton in the championship game on Saturday. The white division top half, Corey. The top half number one seed in the white division goes to Nixa, the Lady Eagles with wins over Parkview, Neosho and Carl Junction. They handed CJ their first home loss since December of 2018. Meanwhile, the white division bottom half number one seed goes to West Plains. Coach Scott Womack, the Lady Zizzers have wins over Monette, Fairgrove, and Lebanon en route to the title win of the Fairgrove tournament this season. And now to reveal the seeded teams in each bracket, starting with the pink division top half, and we'll call this the Central Regional with games at the pit at Central High School celebrating its 90th year this year. The number two seed is Strafford, the five-time defending state champion in class three. The Lady Indians fell to Willard in the semifinals of the Willard Classic, but they were without their point guard, Emma Compton. Strafford won tournament titles in 2016, 17, and 18. The number three seed at the pit will be Mount Vernon, coached by Grant Barrett and always a powerhouse in class three. The number four seed at the pit will be Wheatland, They've been a great representative for the small schools, the class ones in the pink and white lady classic. Games in the bottom half of the pink division will be played at Hillcrest High School with Willard holding the one seed. The number two seed in the Hillcrest regional will be the Ozark Lady Tigers. Anna Hitt is the senior leader of Ozark for coach David Brewer. The number three seed at Hillcrest is Skyline. The Lady Tigers have won pink and white lady classic titles in 2014 and 17 and still coached by hall of famer kevin cheek the number four seed at hillcrest will be central the lady bulldogs feature micaiah brooks who is already central's career scoring leader and this year will challenge the springfield public school scoring record held by tara mitchum 
Corey, on to the white division. All right. Over on the white side, we'll call this the Kickapoo Regional, if you will. The game's being contested on the south side of Springfield. The number one seed we announced earlier being Nixa. Then the number two seed in the top half of the bracket will be Carthage and their head coach, Scott Moore. The number three seed in the Kickapoo region will be Waynesville. The Lady Tigers boasting some very good talent this season with the likes of Grand Canyon University signee Nadia Evans. The number four seed over in the Kickapoo region will be Blue Eye. They had a great run last year that took them all the way to the final four and a third place finish. Now games in the bottom half of the white division will be played at Glendale High School. West Plains holds the number one seed in that part of the bracket. The number two seed in that region goes to the Republic Lady Tigers. Republic has been a model of consistency for over a decade now in girls basketball here in the Ozarks. The number three seed in the bottom half of the white bracket will go to the Lady Bulldogs of El Dorado Springs. Coach Bo Swope brings back a talented team that collected 25 wins a year ago. And finally, the number four seed at Glendale will be Camdenton. So that will take care of the top four seeds in the top and bottom half of the white side of the tournament. And now back to the top half of the pink division bracket to pair the teams up now and playing the number four seed will be Glendale, coached by Trish Marsh. Playing the number three seed, Mount Vernon, will be the clever Lady Blue Jays. Playing the number two seed, Strafford, will be Lebanon, coached by Hall of Famer Jackie Payne. And playing the number one seed, Kickapoo, will be Springfield Catholic, with a new head coach this year, Mike Foley. In the bottom half of the pink division bracket in the Hillcrest Regional, playing the number four seed central will be Ava. The Lady Bears are one of the teams that stepped up when a spot came open this year. Playing the number three seed Skyline will be Marshfield, which won four pink and white titles before the merger of the two tournaments. Playing the number two seed Ozark will be Bolivar. The Lady Liberators competed in the Willard tournament this past week. And playing the number one seed Willard will be Hillcrest, coached by Megan Nunn. From the pink division back to the white division now for the announcement of the matchups. Pair the teams up now, beginning with the number four seed in the top half of the bracket, Blue Eye. They will take on Parkview, coached by Carrie Nichols. Playing the number three seed, Waynesville, will be Buffalo. Playing the number two seeded Carthage Lady Tigers will be Branson, coached by Kip Boo. Playing the number one seed Nixa will be Spokane with their new head coach, Becky Justice. Now to the bottom half of the white division in that Glendale Regional, playing the number four seed Camdenton will be Thayer. The opponent for the three seed El Dorado Springs will be Logan Rogersville, the Lady Wildcats with their new head coach, Jeff Dishman. Taking on the number two seeded Republic Lady Tigers will be Aurora. And finally, playing the number one seed West Plains will be Greenwood and coach Mike Percival. And that lays out the pink division bracket first round and the white division bracket for the first round. And remember, all those games being played at four different locations. Great to see Greenwood in the field now finally for the first time. Absolutely. Three teams that kind of joined in to help make this event happen with the inability to bring teams in from out of town. So a completely local feel and flavor to this one should make it even that much more special this year. Well, time now to see if we can uh, bring in a couple of the coaches and get their thoughts on uh, their teams for this season. And we first want to check in with Katie Pritchard in Marshfield, who had her team already and uh, watching our show here today. Katie, are you with us? I'm here. Can you hear me? I think we got you, Katie. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Well, tell us about uh, what your team has done so far this year. Uh, so far, we've had two games. Uh, we played Clever and lost to them by six, and then uh, played last night against Humansville and got the win there. So um, 
pretty excited uh, about where we're headed and how we started out. How many players do you have back from last season? Uh, we've got uh, three uh, starters back from last year or big time players back from last year. And then um, quite a few newcomers to the varsity level who are going to have to uh, step in pretty quickly and make an impact. Coach, this is obviously a season like no other. Uh, you've seen other sports, I'm assuming, at the school go through COVID protocols and everything else. What's maybe the most surprising thing now that's on your to-do list that you have to worry about prior to practice or game time as a head coach? Well, I, I think it's just the, the mask thing, you know, just constantly having to uh, remind myself and remind the kids, um, you know, when they're not out there to put the mask on and, you um, uh, it can get confusing sometimes, obviously, and, and frustrating, but we're starting to catch a hang of it. Has your team had to go to any quarantine, or any players, or anything like that? No, we've been fortunate so far um, that we haven't had any issues uh, as far as COVID goes. Coach, I know you've got some of your players there with you. This is a tournament, obviously, that you have been familiar with for a number of years. These young players that you have now, do they know kind of the history of this event? And is it something that the kids get excited for each year, just like the coaches do? Yeah, I, th I think, um, you know, um, all these kids here grew up watching Marshfield basketball and, and watching them compete. And so um, they're well aware of what the pink and white is and what it means. And just, I think they're excited for the opportunity to be a part of it. What does your team have coming up now before the pink and white lady classic? Uh, we're currently in the uh, Hermitage Tournament, and then uh, we play Hillcrest and um, East Newton next week. And what's going on at Hermitage right now? Oh, well, uh, we, we have the second round coming up uh, on Thursday where we're playing Morrisville and then a um, uh, championship game on Saturday, hopefully. Well, good luck in that event. What, what is the, the formula or is there one with trying to navigate the holidays with your kids and practices? and then getting ready to fire up the tournament on the 28th. Do you give them a certain number of days off? Do you come in and practice on Christmas Eve? What's it like in Marshfield? Well, we usually, we like to have, uh, let them have their time with their family. You know, obviously we have a little more time this year without playing on the 26th. Uh, so that'll give us the opportunity to give them Christmas Eve and Christmas Day off to enjoy themselves and then really hit the ground running on the 26th. Katie Pritchard at Marshfield, we wish you luck in the Pink and White Lady Classic and the rest of the way, and uh, thank your team for being with us, and thank you for being with us. Thank you. Katie Pritchard out of Marshfield, and now we're going to uh, welcome in Coach Jim Pendergrass of the Kickapoo Lady Chiefs, and his team drew a number one seed in the top half of the pink division bracket. Pender, are you online with us? I am, Don. Still trying to get Pender in our studio here. We can we yeah. can hear him. We just got to get the volume adjusted back up here, and we'll be able to hear him. Or at least I thought I heard him in the hallway. I can hear you, Don. There he hey, is. we got you now, Pender. So, ain't technology grand? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what has your team done so far, Jim? Uh, we're four zero. We've played four games. Uh, we were at the Carthage tournament last week, uh, and we've had one regular season game with Thayer. And uh, coming up before the pink and white, is everybody uh, healthy for your team? Uh, no, we're going to be without uh, Bella Fauntleroy uh, here. She suffered a concussion, so she'll be out for the tournament this weekend uh, down in Ozark. Expect to have her back uh, at least in a week or two? Uh, you know, that's a concussion. Who knows how long that is? Well, what has the uh, preseason ritual been like, Jim, as far as just getting into the swing of things, getting a couple of games under your belt and getting used to all the new rules and regulations that you have to operate inside of just to have practice? Well, we've just tried to go on with what they're requesting us to do and requiring us to do and uh, masking up. And the girls have done a really good job of adapting and following the rules and regulations that they're supposed to. Who's your next game against, Pender? Uh, we play Rolla tomorrow night uh, down in Ozark. Okay, well, good luck with that. And uh, we hope to have a happy and healthy uh, group of Kickapoo Lady Chiefs at the Pink and White Lady Classic. And congratulations on that one seat. Hey, thank you, Donna. I'm trying to figure out how we didn't get a home game. <laughs> I mean, don't well, don't they 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 send we'll Duke about that to Greensboro? Later. <laughs> All right, they send Duke Bender, to Greensboro. I'm trying it. to figure that You're out. Welcome in now.
<laughs> Springfield Public Schools Director of Athletics, Josh Scott. And uh, Josh, this is uh, obviously a very different type of a feel to the Pink and White Lady Classic this year, but so much work has gone in to, to pull it off. Well, Don, yeah, thank you. It's obviously different. Everything with 2020 is different. But the thing Marty and, and I and Darren and Mike all talked about coming into this is we have great women's basketball in Southwest Missouri. We have amazing high school teams, uh, and we wanted to give them the opportunity to, to compete in this tournament. So I, I, first of all, can't do this without Marty Marsh. Uh, those of you that are, are in our system or have been around Southwest Missouri, Marty has done so much planning and organizing for this event. I just want to personally thank him again. Uh, but it, the thanks don't stop there. You know, Mercy Sports Medicine, uh, we just took an event that went from uh, two gyms and moved it to five uh -huh. and uh, five different facilities in four days. So I want to thank uh, Jim Rayner for everything he's going to do for that. And uh, also our Southwest basketball officials. You know, uh, there is a, a, another 32 team tournament going on with the blue and gold. So we are going to have our officials moving all over uh, Springfield. So just really, really happy to have all of them uh, playing with us. Kelly Holt uh, heads up the SMBOA and assigns uh, everyone to get them to the right place. Kelly does an outstanding job. If you've ever seen a man, mad scientist, that's him <laughs> with his computer trying to station who goes to what games. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable. And then uh, right here at Central High School, Central Intelligence and the staff and Josh Cantrell. I'll tell you what, folks, you, you cannot believe the system that we are in right now in a high school. Josh Cantrell, we came to him about a month ago and said, do you think your kids can do it? And he, he said, oh, I know they can, you know, and, and it'll be a fantastic show. And uh, man, they have they are so outstanding. This uh, set is unbelievable. The I hope everyone's enjoying the product and uh, hopefully we can give something a little bit different, a little bit new. You get questions sometime on Facebook, like, do you know how to juggle? Well. Yeah, you know how to juggle because you're juggling everything that's going on right now with a, several different sports seasons. Yeah, Mar Marty and I pride ourselves on signing up for stuff we don't really know what we're doing. With. <laughs> uh, so this was uh, just one more thing added to it. I mean, who, who can't do a press conference on Zoom, interview coaches, and uh, come to a school during a global pandemic? So for fans coming to the Pink and White Lady Classic, tell us what to expect, what will be expected of them at the different public high schools. So one of the, the big reasons that we split it up into the four, four different sites or the five sites over four days was we want moms and dads to have an opportunity to watch their daughters play and compete, uh, but we can also minimize crowding and we can minimize space. So we are gonna operate under 35% attendance we're gonna ask uh, people to clear out the gyms after every two games. Because of that, we've cut ticket prices in half. So we're gonna ask moms and dads to come uh, watch a couple games and we're gonna ask everybody to clear out the gym so that we can give that next opportunity. And those gyms, especially uh, Parkview and Kickapoo that I've seen already have a great new seating available. We are very fortunate and excited with what our school board and our district leaders are helping us to make some of the improvements. Uh, if you haven't been in Parkview's gym or Kickapoo's gym in a year, you're gonna be really, really excited when you walk in there. So the Pink and White Lady Classic, December 28th, 29th, 30th, and 31st. And again, it's an all local field this year for the first time, I guess, kind of going back to the Pink and White days, but uh, it will be all Southwest Missouri teams. It's gonna be all Southwest Missouri teams, but it's still gonna be great basketball. And, and on that finals day, folks, we put our games early. You can get four basketball games in that day. Make sure you catch everything and then get off the roads before New Year's Eve evening. Pink and white finals at 10 and noon at Parkview High School. And then you can go to a JQH Arena for the blue and gold championship games at two o'clock and four o'clock on New Year's Eve. Josh, thank you so much. Thank and uh, we'll, we'll make it happen. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you, Don. Appreciate All right. it. Springfield Public Schools Athletic Director, Josh Scott joining us. And uh, Corey again, as we uh, close this out, we want to say thank you to the tournament sponsors, uh, HK and W Supply, Highland Dairy, Play It Against Sports, Mediacom, and uh, everybody who has uh, agreed to make this a strong and safe Pink and White Lady Classic. Yep, it's going to be an event like no other, and it's uh, it's just taken so much to be able to keep this on the rails and keep it going. Uh, huge shout out to the folks at Springfield Public Schools and. Uh, the guys, uh, the crew here at Central High School in the media department, 
this is not an easy thing to do, what mm. we decided to do to try and get this information out there. They were working in the two minutes before we went on, still making adjustments, making corrections, figuring out ways to make this work. I've been doing this a long time. It's not easy. And I think I've found a couple of people that I could probably hire this uh -huh. afternoon that might be able to help us on our Mediacom broadcast. Obviously excited to have television coverage of the Pink and White Lady Classic Final again this season on MC22. This show in its entirety will also run on MC22 in the nights and days leading up to the start of the tournament on December 28th. And of course, kind of like Josh said, four games in one day, you can do it. We'll have two different TV trucks at two different locations and be able to bring you the finals of the blue and gold and the pink and white. What a perfect way to wrap up 2020. Those of you who, who are still with us and have questions about anything involved, uh, don't ask about who you're playing or why you had to play them, <laughs> but uh, direct your questions to uh, Josh Scott or to Marty Marsh with Springfield Public Schools uh, first. And then if you need uh, some further answers, uh, contact Darren Taylor or Mike Percival at Greenwood Lab School. Let me ask you something. You've been asking the majority of the questions in this 30 minute window that we've got. What is your favorite part about this event every year? Just uh, getting together with all the people that you see uh, coming in, sitting in the same seats. It won't be the case this year. You'll have to find some of your friends around at the, at the different gyms, but uh, you know, just the fellowship that you, you see from everybody at the Blue and Gold and at the Pink and White Lady Classic and getting together and celebrating basketball in Southwest Missouri because these tournaments, the Blue and Gold, the Pink and White, into the Winter Classic in January, replacing the uh, Tournament of Champions this year, they belong to Southwest Missouri. They are our people, they're our tournaments, and uh, it's a great celebration of basketball. I know for me, we've already been out with our crew. We've covered two high school basketball games. We've covered two college basketball games. We've already done a wrestling event. And the thing for me right now, after this long 2020 year, is how amazingly normal it feels to be back in a high school gym, to be in a college arena. Even if I've got to wear a mask, even if I've got to sit 10 feet away from somebody, for me in my lifetime, being in a gym, that's normal and it's comforting right now. And so I hope you come out to all five locations over the course of the four days and taking these games. And like Josh and Don said, check out the new renovations of the venues. We were at Kickapoo the other night. I couldn't believe it. Felt like I was in a different gym. New seats, new color, new look. Uh, it's been a lot of improvements made in some of these gyms around Springfield. It is the 2020 Pink and White Lady Classic. It takes place December 28th through 31st at the five Springfield Public School High School gymnasiums. Brackets will be out. You'll uh, easily know uh, where your team is going to be playing. Get out and support the Pink and White Lady Classic this year. Catch the finals on Mediacom MC22 over the New Year's holiday. That will do it for us. We thank you for joining us from Central High School and Central Intelligence for Corey Riggs, for Josh Scott and Marty Marsh, and all of us with Springfield Public Schools and Mediacom. I'm Don West. Thanks for joining us and good evening.